Hey, AP Kempsters, this is Mrs. Vandewally bringing you the second part of section 13.2, uh, the rate law, the effect of concentration on reaction rate. We have earlier found that if we're talking about a decomposition reaction where you only have one reactant, you can see if a, if a reaction is a zero order, first order, or second order, by seeing the effects, if you double that initial reaction, what was the effect on the rate? If you recall zero order, there was no effect on the rate. A first order, if you double the initial concentration, the rate would double. And a second order is when you have a doubling of the, of the reactant and you get a quadruple effect of the rate. So how many reactions really are decomposition? Most of the, the reactions out there have more than one reactant. So how do I deal with this? Well, that's where this uh, Roman numeral 2 comes in. Reaction order for multiple reactants. So this is for all those other reactions out there. Um, you have to use the experimental method, and that's what our lab coming up is going to show you, uh, how, how to do the experimental method. So we're going to vary the initial concentration of the reactants, uh, determine the initial rate for each concentration, and examine the relationship between the rate and the initial concentration. Um, using one reactant, you needed a minimum of two experiments. Using two reactants, you're going to need at least three uh, reactions to see how this works. So again, here uh, for part four, we have a generic equation, and you're only going to look at the reactants here, and N and M are the uh, order of the reactants in a sense, and the overall orders are going to add them up. So let's see how a real example works. Let me scroll up the screen here. Okay, so for example, we have uh, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, yielding nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. So notice over here, we have our data from the experiment, and it says the initial rate of reaction is measured at several different concentration of the reactions with the following results. Well, let's start off and do me a favor. Will you number each of these? These are your experiment numbers. So experiment one, two, three, and four. Do that for me. And then what? So the, the rate law, we have to figure out the rate law. Um, before we go on with this, I just want to make the comment that if any point, um, if I'm going too fast or something, you can always pause it and go back and, and listen to certain sections again. And that's kind of the beauty of uh, these, these flipped classrooms in a sense where you can always pause, go back, and write things out. I don't mean to go too fast, but you can always help yourself if I do. So we need to find the rate law. Well, we are looking for we, where we have... Um, concentrations the same. So for example, if I were to look at experiment number one and two, let's look at that. Notice what's happening here. Experiment one and two, the carbon monoxide rate is held constant. And what happened over here? Well, um, the nitrogen dioxide has doubled. So now what? Well, let's look at the rate. The rate went from 0.0021 to 0.0082. That's not a doubling. What is that effect there? Think about it. If you got it quadrupled, then that is correct. So what does that mean the order in regards to nitrogen dioxide is? So when nitrogen dioxide doubles, the rate law quadruples. The rate law for uh, nitrogen dioxide here let's see what happens here so rate law so what to the what is the order here it's not zero it's not one that means one doubled the other one doubled it's the rate law of two hang on let me get that in here so rate law of two Ta -da. so you'd put the little two up there so it looks like it's no2 squared oh uh, good so now what well what about carbon monoxide so we have to kind of start over again so if you look at back at your experiments, where is nitrogen dioxide held constant? It's right here. So in experiments number two and three is where you're going to have the concentrations uh, of nitrogen dioxide held constant. And that's what you want because we don't want to see the effect of nitrogen dioxide. We already know what that is. So we want to know what the effect of carbon, uh, di uh, excuse me, carbon monoxide is. So over here is where you have... Uh, the doubling effect of carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide doubles. Let's put that over here. Carbon dioxide doubles. So what happens to the rate? Well, look over here. Did it really do anything? And the answer is obviously 
no. So in effect, we have no change. So let's put that over here. The rate has no change. And what kind of order is that? If you remember, if you uh, change the concentration, but there's no change in the rate, again, no change over here, what does that mean? It means the rate uh, or the uh, order is zero. So now we get to put that back over in our rate law and see what happens. All right, so back over here again, the rate law is equal to some constant times the nitrogen dioxide to the second order. And what did we say uh, happened to the um, <clears throat> to the carbon monoxide? It is at the zero order right there. So we, we've now figured out the rate law. What about the rate constant for the reaction? What do we do about that? All right, so to find the overall uh, constant and also always include your units, you need to pick one of the experiments. So I just happen to pick one because the, the numbers seem to be the easiest. You could pick whichever one you want. You could pick one, two, three, or four. It doesn't make any difference. So from the equation above, we know that the rate is equal to the constant, which is what you're solving for, times nitrogen dioxide squared times carbon monoxide to the zero power. So we now know that the rate is equal to, from the first experiment, 0 0.0021, and it's equal to the value K that you're looking for, times 0.1 molar uh, uh, squared times 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 molar to the zero. Now, what does that mean to the zero power? What does this actually equal? It equals one. So I don't need to include that value anymore. So now what? Well, that is equal to, let me put this back up here, is equal to K times 0 0.01 molarity squared. Um, so now, gave myself a little more room here. Um, if I took 0 0.01 molarity over, divided by, uh, the 0 0.001 molar squared, well, that's equal to your K value again. I just divided both sides uh, by 0 0.001 molar squared. Well, if you look at it, that is equal to uh, 2.1, 1 over molarity over second, but the AP folks would rather see you write uh, molarity to negative 1 seconds to negative 1. Okay? Now, what is the overall order here? Okay, the overall order is you add up your exponents. So you grab the exponent from here, so it's 2, plus the exponent of this, 0, and that is equal to 2. So the overall order, whoa, that's a big 2, uh, is 2. Okay, And you're going to notice something when the overall orders, that will be consistent with this over here, with the units of the K. We're going to see that to be true. Okay. So why don't you turn the page, and now let's do problem number six. Okay, so how do we do this? As we did last time, let's go ahead and number these. One, two, three, four, so we know which experiments we're talking about. And we're going to go ahead and set up the same setup as before. Um, where is the, the, the experiments where the concentrations are held constant? Well, it looks like uh, experiments one and two, we have a constant value here. And in three and or two and three, we have a constant value here. So just like what we did before, let's go ahead and look at experiment number one and two. So what happens at experiment one and two? Well, the Cl2 remains constant, doesn't it? So if it remains constant, that means I can do this. And what happens in experiment one and two? Well, the, the I guess trichloromethane is doubling. There we go. And what does the rate do? It practically doubles, so we'll, we'll say that. So what does that mean? If the initial concentrations double, the rate doubles, that means that the rate law for at least the um, trichloromethane is to the first order. So let's try this again, but now using experiments two and three. So using two and three, all right, the uh, trichloromethane, the rates are constant. And so what happens to the chlorine? The chlorine also doubles. But now, wait a minute. What's going on with the rate? I can say for a fact that the rate is not the same, so it's not zero order. It didn't double, so it's not first order. And it didn't quadruple, so it's not second order. So what do we do? Well. Let's see if we can't figure this out. So you're going to use this technique for any time that's not a perfect 
remains constant, uh, the rate doubles, the rate quadruples. In fact, what I'm about ready to show you will work for every single time if you're ever stuck, okay? So watch what I'm going to do. All right, so how do we figure out the rate of the chlorine? So, or, um, I'm sorry, of the, yeah, the chlorine. So again, we're going to be looking at experiments number three and two. So this is how you're going to solve for each and every one of these that don't work out real nice. So start off with uh, the fact that you're going to be dividing. So rate three divided by rate two. I do that because you're going to get numbers bigger than one. So 0 0.0098 divided by 0 0.0069 is going to be bigger than one. It just works out better for me. So I'll just plug those numbers in that we just saw is equal to 0 0.0098 uh, divided by 0 0.0096. I'm not putting the units in because what's going to happen to the units? They're going to cancel out anyway. Now here is the clincher. You're going to take the, uh, for our experiment number three, the, the, the uh, concentration of the chlorine raised to some order. We don't know what that is. It's not a nice zero, one, two. Uh, so we're going to call it X. And we're going to divide it by the same, con or the concentration of chlorine from the second experiment. And look what happens. The Ks are going to do what? The Ks are going to cancel out. So we're going to figure out the K constant later. But for right now, we know they cancel out. And, and I might want to add, you might want to use your calculators at this point and follow along with me. So 0 0.0098 divided by 0 0.0069, that is equal to 1.4. <coughs> I now plug in the actual values of the chlorines. And for experiment number 3, it's 0 0.020. And for experiment number 1, it's 0 0.010. So what do I do about this? Well, what is 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.01? Well, that's equal to... Two. So now we have the equation 1.4 is equal to 2 to the x, okay? Um, I think I'm going to have to uh, scroll down here and, and get us some more room. Hang on a second. All right, that should do it. Oops. Um, so anyway, uh, how do I deal with solving for x? If you remember, logs are going to come in. If you need to find an exponent, remember an, an, a log is an exponent. So how do I solve for x? Well, um, I will take the logs of both sides. I'll stick it over here. So log of 1.4 equals a log of 2 raised to the x power. If you remember your rule of logs, what do you do with the x? It's multiplied, isn't it? So how do I solve for x? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by log of 2. And then, what is log of 1.4 divided by log of 2, and it's equal to 0.5. So we did all that work so we could find the order of the reaction for chlorine. It is to the 0 0.5 order, okay? So to solve for the rate constant, it's just like what we did before. Pick an experiment, use the one with the easiest numbers, and then plug in everything and um, solve for k. So why don't you try that, pause this, and see how you do. All right, so to find the rate constant, I use experiment number one. Again, the numbers are easiest. So the rate from experiment number one is 0 0.0035 molar per second. It's equal to constant, and I just plugged in the two values of uh, trichloromethane and chlorine gas raised to their powers. So the solve for k is that divided both sides by 0 0.010 molar and 0 0.01 um, to the 0.5, to the molarity of the 0.5. I'm trying to get my units to work out, and that's why I did that. So notice what happens. Um, let's just do this. The molarities here cancel out. Uh, so what am I left with? I'm left with this unit, and I'm left with this unit. So that's why these numbers show up here. 0 0.0035 divided by 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.01 is 3.5. So you get 3.5, 1 over molar to the 1 half uh, seconds on the bottom. And then again, how the AP will probably want to see it is uh, written as negative exponents. So finally, the question is, what is the overall order? That's again, you add up your exponents. So you would add up 1 plus 0 0.5 and you get 1.5. Um, that is the first two problems. Why don't you go ahead and try to solve for the next, uh, finish off the section really. <coughs> Look for the next um, video and um, it will have all the answers worked out for you. Talk to you later. Bye.